Okay, this is a cute little uh, craft sent to me by my friend Sheila. She's also a subscriber, and we message back and forth. And she sent me this idea and told me how she done it. And so I'm going to replicate what she she done, and I'm going to insert a picture of her project here. Okay, I'm not sure. I think she used a rub-on on hers, and mine's going to be just a little bit different because I didn't have any rub-on, so I come up with something else. But to start with, all you need is four of your these type clothespins, the older style clothespins, which these are new, and four popsicle sticks. And what I'm going to do is, if I can get the lid off my glue, I'm going to put my popsicle sticks together. I don't even know if you have to glue them, but I'm going to. Because I had them stuck together. They was pretty sturdy. Okay. And now, I'm going to try to put a little on each side of a popsicle stick to secure them in the... And she didn't tell me to do this. I'm just making it up as I go by her picture. And I'm going to stick those in there, even them up, okay, and then there's that one, easy enough, huh? She really did send, send me an easy craft to do, oh, I just put that down on my mat. Going in that one tighter. We need me the glue. Okay, they're all even. All right, now from here I'll show you what I'm going at. These it's going to be kind of like a, a little hanging scroll. It's just a little small one as you saw from Sheila's picture, and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna put on mine and how I done it. Okay, I wanna put a, I wanna do a printout on this muslin. So I'm going to use uh, freezer paper and adhere it to my muslin, and then I'm gonna feed it through my printer. And I just got this uh, here off of uh, Amazon, and I've used it couple times. It works good. So the first thing I'm going to do is it has a dull side and a shiny side. And I'm going to lay the shiny side down on my muslin. And now I'm going to iron it on. And I have my uh, iron set on cotton. I want to make sure all the edges are secured well because it's going to run through the printer. Okay, now I'm going to take my scissors, a good pair of uh, your material scissors, and I'm going to trim it. But I'm not going to do all this on camera, but this, I'm just going to trim it off. All right, I have it trimmed down, and I'm going to go over it one more time, and this time I've got the muslin turned up and ironing on it. Just wanna make sure everything's down good because I'm going to run it through the printer. And 
and you want to trim off if you have any little fuzzies sticking out you want to trim those off no chance to get hung up in your printer that way all right now I'll show you what I'm going to print out and the, what I'll do is I have a top loading printer so I'll put my material facing this way and it'll come out like this with the image if you go run through on the bottom, you will turn it over and it'll run up where your image is on this side. That's what I'm gonna do right now. I'll show you the image I'm gonna print out. This is the image that I want on it. And I bought this image off of Etsy. It had like 10 different florals on it and I picked this one with the rusty bucket. So now I'm gonna put it in my printer and print it off on my material. I thought I might show you setting up my printer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go hit print and then I'm, this is in my Silhouette software, so I'll hit print here and then I'll go up to print preferences and it's on my eight and a half plain paper, high resolution. I don't think I have a cardstock on mine. Or I would print that because maybe other photo paper. I'll try that one because it is a little thicker. Okay. And I'm going to apply and send it through the printer. And my printer's down underneath my table. I don't know if you can really, my printer's dirty and dusty. Let's see, yeah, it's feeding through. Okay, turn it back around here. Isn't that pretty? Turned out good. And now, on with my project. All right, now that I have it all ready to put together, let's do it. It's going to be easy. So, I am going to use a mixture of hot glue and some uh, tack clear tacky glue. Just putting a little bit of each on. That's exactly why I like to use some clear glue too, because you have to move fast on hot glue. Okay, and then I'll just I'll twirl it about right to there, so I'm going to pull it over, put a little of this glue on there. some hot glue. Of course, once you got that first twirl, the hot glue is fine, except I don't know if it'll come through or not. I think it was clear that did. Got a pin stuck to me out of my glue. Can't get it off. There. Now I'm going to roll this one up this way. Okay. 
Oh, I should put my clear on first. I'll go ahead and use my hot glue on this underneath because it's already rolled. I didn't come down far enough this way. Okay. It's pretty much done, except now I'm going to put a little hanger on it. I'm just going to use some jute. I forgot to say, I did fray the edges of my uh, material a little bit, just like she did. Well, go underneath there. Such a cute little project. If you have a little area that just needs something small, this works. Okay, there you go, that's it, it's done. Turned out really cute. Well, I need to secure this a little more, I can see that. Roll, there, that should do it. And it's finished. And that was a simple, easy project. Except I just went off over here. I wasn't paying attention. Thank you, Sheila, for sending this idea to me. Well, my next project I just got at the thrift store this last week. And I'm just going to show you a few things. I'm not going through everything I got. I've already put everything away but this. And this is going to be my next project. Probably do that up with some kind of flowers or something. So I'll figure out what that's going to be. But this will be my next project. And then in that haul, I also got this. It's a little candle holder. And I don't think it'll stay blue. It says, to Irene from Patty. I paid 50 cents for this. And I'll probably make that over. And I paid 50 cents for this, which is what I'm going to... This is old. It's got a wood handle. It looks at one time to have been kind of cream or a white color. And I'm just going to leave it the way it is. It has just a little bit of rust. I'm not even going to paint the handle or anything. I'm going to leave it just the way it was. Or is. <laughs> and then I got this old potato masher. It needs to be straightened up. But I can straighten that and fix something on with that. And then I got this little, uh, this potato masher. It was 50 cents also. Then I got this little thing here, little box that I'll redo. And I think, yeah, that just tears right off of there. I don't like grapes. But I'll do something with it. It does have a cute little handle. But I'll fix that up in a video in the future. Sometime when I get to figure out what I'm going to do with it. But right now, I'm going to start working on, the, on this. Okay, this is what I've pulled out to start working on the little flower sifter. I've got some... Uh, little round balls that I got at the thrift store for oven four dollar I stuck one down in there and then of course some uh, I'm pretty sure I got that at the thrift store too some moss and then some Waverly 
antiquing wax to put on my stems. And then I cut out some little uh, leaves for my flowers. And I'm going to put this all together, and when I'm done, we'll see if I add anything else. Okay, this shouldn't take long, really, to put together. I've already uh, stained my sticks. Now I'm just going to tie this on there. I did kind of cut these in a, I just doubled over my material and just done that on the material and cut them out like that. So they kind of have the shape of a leaf. So what I'll do is finish tying these on there and then just stick them in there and put my moss around them and see what else I want to do. This is really an easy little makeover, and I think it's going to be cute. It'll be cute in the kitchen. So, all right, I got that one done, and this one I had stuck on there. I think I'll just untie it, put it back on like the right way, because I did make this one a little smaller on the, the leave part, because the flowers a lot smaller. All right, I'm going to finish on and stick them in there and put the moss on them and see how it looks. Okay, this is what I've done so far, and it does need a little more something. I'm just not really sure what it is. So I'll let it sit here for a while and see if I can come up with something. All right, I ended up putting some little pip berries in it, and that's all. I tried a little bow on the handle. But to me, it hid the wooden handle, and I just wanted to leave it like that and leave it simple. Well, I'm in the garage again, and I need all these boards even, because I'm gonna make a tall welcome sign for a front porch, so I need to just Cut, cut each one of these or just actually probably just go across there and cut each one of those off and then I'll come back and show you what else I'm going to do I got my uh, boards cut and now I need to cut down about four pieces about that length there and then just space them out and get some glue and use my bread nailer and mill them together and then from there, I'm going to slant this wood here, two of them, one that way, and then one this way and make it look like a birdhouse top because I want something colorful on my porch. And I'm gonna make this look like a birdhouse from, I can't, well, about from, there's the bottom, about up to there, and then I'll put the welcome up there. And I'm thinking, I want something really color colorful because I do have a sign for my front that has, oh, I can't remember. I know it's Welcome to Our Farm, but it has something else on it. I had stencil on it. It was white and black. I want something colorful. So I'm making a new sign for my front porch. And I'm thinking I want for the little holes that you look like holes for the bird, I think I want to flower around each hole. I have about three or four holes with a little perch on each one of them. So I'm going to get this cut up and done and get these pieces cut and this sanded down. And then I'll go in and to Silhouette Studio software and find me some flowers that I can cut out of thin, like thin balsa wood with like a one inch hole in the middle of them. You'll see as it goes together, but that that's what I'm working on right now. Well, maybe you can see what I'm working towards now for a sign. Up there, I'll have welcome something, something up there on the top. And then coming down here, I'll have my holes and my perches. 
Well, I think I've got everything I need to get started painting and finishing this up, except, well, I'll get to that here in just a second. I'm using uh, the colors I'm gonna, at the top of it's going to be black. The birdhouse itself is going to be this, uh, I believe that's, what is that? Fancy Farm Girl by DIY. And then Queen Bee will be the roof that I have here. And probably the centers of my flowers. And my flowers will probably be white. And then I've cut this out here. It says, Welcome to Our Home with a flower to put at the top of the birdhouse. And then the roof will be here. And then I'll have the little flowers, which I have here yet to go cut out. But I'm going to get this started, uh, all these things painted, and then I'll go cut that out and paint those while these are drying, and then try to put it together. It's going to take a while. I know it seems simple, but it's like it took me an hour to figure out which what I wanted to put on it. And then I didn't like the flower that was on it, so I didn't. I went and found a. I found this flower. Well, I used the same flower I cut out for my flowers on the bottom, but then I needed a stem, so I brought in another flower that had a stem, and removed the top of it and put the stem onto this. I mean, it just it takes time, and it's just things I don't show because I couldn't sit here that long showing you what I'm doing. But that's the colors I'm going to use. Uh, this will be the first time I've used DIY, DIY paint. And I didn't know. To, I was wondering whether to use the aviary or this uh, fancy farm girl. And I want it bright, so I chose that one. And, of course, Queen Bee is pretty bright. And I think that's going to look nice. Well, I'm going to get started painting. Well, this is kind of hard to show, but this is what I've got so far. I have painted it. I used the Fancy Farm Girl for the green. And then I went over it with clear wax. And when I did, it's dried and been rubbed off. It, it leaves a blotchy look. I guess that's what it's supposed to do. But on the website, it says it'll be, when you put the wax on, it'll look blotchy. But as it dries, it'll clear up. Well, it's had plenty of time to dry. I don't mind it. I like the way it looks. But now I'm going to get take this uh, finishing wax. It's black. Whoops. Finishing wax. It's black. And go around the edges and around the roof and everything. And I'll also do that around the little flowers that I've cut to go on it. And then after that, I'll take my stencil that I have cut out and put it up here. And I know this is kind of hard to see, but it's long. And it's going to go on my porch. But stay with me. You'll see how it looks when I get finished. I am going to start putting the black wax on the edges. I'll film just a little bit of that. Okay, I'm working on the flowers first. Set them aside after I get them finished. And I'm just going around the edges just to give it a little depth with the uh, black wax. I gotta make sure I'm in frame. and I'm getting a little blacker. I don't want to put it on straight, so I'm going to wipe some of it off on my paper towel. Yeah, I'm going to get that a little darker around the edges. Okay, that does that one. And now... Go around the middle piece. Oh, I already did. So that's the way that that looks. Now I'm going to move on to the 
birdhouse itself. And it's kind of hard to, I can't tell where I'm at. Let's see, I think I need to bring, I'm okay. All right, I'll do this edge first. Oops. I just want to go around the edges and darken it some. And if you get it too dark, it wipes right off. Because I do have the clear wax on it. I'm not rubbing hard because I don't want it all off. Okay, that's the way I want it to look all the way around the edges. So I'm going to finish this off and then start putting the uh, little saying that I have at the top on. I've decided that I need, I don't have it, the flowers put on or anything yet, but I have decided it needs something like right in there. It just looks empty. So it's a birdhouse, so why not a bird? So I went to my Cameo and cut out several patterns. And I think this is the size I want here. And I kind of put that behind there so I could notch that out so the bird could sit down on that. And I think once I get that cut out in wood and put on there and painted, that will look better. Uh, and I also forgot to camp, uh, make a circle for my flower up here, so I figured this size would work. Whoa! Lost it. Anyways, that little thread will be the size. I'll draw around it and cut a circle from inside there and cut my bird out and paint those. Here I am again trying to find a place to shoot. I couldn't take this outside because we're still kind of cool and windy and everything's still dry and just now starting to get a hint of green in the grass and stuff and I've got to get out and clean off my porch when it warms up just a little bit more. We've made it where the chickens can't come in on the in the front yard now so it should stay a lot cleaner if the wind would slow down. All right, I'm gonna start at the top. And here's welcome to our home. And then I added the little blue bird at the last moment and I'm glad I did because I like the way it looks. And there's the bottom of my birdhouse. And I did decide not to put any perches on it. Give you a kind of a close up of all of it. All right, guys, that's it. And until the next one, we'll see you later.